Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Shannon Ogden with the latest from Denver 7. Since January, patients and family members have reached out to Denver 7 and helped Denver 7 investigators uncover serious issues at Clearview Behavioral Health. The accusations include questionable deaths, suicides after patients were released, and holding patients longer than medically necessary. Plans to revoke Clearview's license, and today, Clearview says it's ready to fight back in court. Now, insiders believe this is the first time in state history that Colorado has moved to revoke the license of a mental health facility. Chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski read this 22-page report claiming Clearview provides safe and high-quality care. It was literally a nightmare. I felt like I was in a horror story or a horror film when I was there every single day. We've heard from former patients. With insurance, what you witnessed, was it ethical? No. There's people that just went in for med changes, needed some help, so why do they have to be there 10 to 14 days? What's the answer? They didn't need to be there 10 to 14 days. And from former employees. Would it be accurate for me to report that Clearview attempted to cover up the details of this death? Yes, they, they gave us inaccurate and, and misleading information in the initial investigation. And a medical expert. Now in this response, attorneys for Clearview are saying what we've reported and what state investigators have uncovered are simply not true. What do these 22 pages say to you? Uh, Tony, these 22 pages say to me that the facility does not believe that uh, they have, ha have had the problems that we've seen. Randy Kirkendall made the state's decision moving to revoke Clearview's license. It appears they're saying they've done nothing wrong, basically saying what you found isn't true. Do you feel challenged? Um, absolutely feel challenged. And... Uh, we do not believe that that's correct. The state standing strong on what investigators have uncovered, what Denver 7 has reported. Two questionable deaths, a series of questionable suicides, 85 deficiencies, and evidence supporting 17 other complaints. Is this consistent with their theme of denial? Quite frankly, Tony, it's consistent with the response that we've received from, from this facility uh, over the last year and a half. Clearview again declined our interview requests. The corporation's written statement included, we are contesting the state's allegations. And as a facility that focuses on behavioral health, we believe we should be allowed to continue to provide these vitally needed services. The department remains absolutely committed to its notice of charges and what we have seen, and we are moving forward to a hearing uh, where a judge will make those decisions. State regulators say it could take as much as six months before that hearing with a judge. Until then, Clearview remains open, but the state says it is watching closely. Colorado could be tightening down on oil and gas companies even more. Our partners at the Denver Post report that state health officials want to put new rules in place to crack down on air pollution. They want the companies to comply with federal ozone limits and get on board with state efforts to combat climate change. The changes include the elimination of a 90-day exemption, which allows companies to drill without any sort of air pollution limiting permit requiring companies to inspect facilities for leaks twice a year and requiring companies to measure air pollution along pipelines. Now, the state's also cracking down on car companies. Right now, Colorado officials are considering a zero emissions vehicle program, which would require car makers to sell zero emission cars starting in 2023. The American Lung Association ranked Denver as the 12th most ozone polluted city in the U.S. and cars and trucks are the leading source of that pollution. Well, the cost of college continues to climb, but a new report says it's worth the investment. The State Department of Higher Education says bachelor degrees in STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math, are bringing in the biggest returns. So a decade out, graduates can earn a median income of $60,000. These statistics will show that higher education is simply a good investment, not only for families who make it, but for our economy in general. Lawmakers directed the department to publish an annual return on investment report to encourage post-secondary education. Well, a car is stolen with something very precious inside. The owner says his best friend, a chunky black lab, was in the back seat, and tonight he is desperate 
As Denver 7's Jason Grenauer shows us, he says he'll do anything to get his dog back. I came here to meet a couple workers. I walked downstairs and looked across the street. My car was gone. Security footage shows his Audi taking off. I left the windows up and the AC running because my seven-year-old lab was in the back. Her name is Goose, described by her owner as jet black, wonderful, and a bit overweight. She's just super sweet dog, like the sweetest. She's my girlfriend. She's everything to me. Yeah, she's my best buddy. The car was left running, but Richards had the key in his pocket. So whenever they stop the car and turn it off, it won't start again. So the windows could be stuck up. They won't operate with the car not running, and my dog could be in the back. As temperatures climb above 90, the only lead, more security footage. It shows this couple walking back and forth near the car moments before it was stolen. My concern is my dog. I don't even care about the car. I'm just concerned where my dog is. I want my dog back. Today, flyers are being put up, posts shared across social media, and a reward being offered for Goose's safe return. Give me my dog back and I'll give you a thousand bucks. No questions asked. In Denver, I'm Jason Grenauer. Denver 7. All right, let's get Goose back home. We've posted information about the dog and the reward on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Just click on the story. It's right on the home page. From the First Alert Weather Center right now, let's take a look at the seven-day forecast. Uh, a familiar pattern here, hot afternoon storms. A little cooler, though, starting Thursday and Friday. The heat ticks back up on Saturday, Sunday, and it looks like a little less chance of any rain or storms over the weekend. This has been a Denver 7 On Demand update. Thank you for joining us. Check back tonight. We'll have another one for you. And download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Shannon Ogden.